thoughts on the valuations of uh, the market right now, especially the broader market? Because there was a very decent correction which played out in mid cap and small cap ever since commentary on uh, broader market valuations came in from the regulator. Then the entire stress test issue from the AMFI side also was a bit worrying for the market. Uh, now the small cap, mid caps are coming to terms. How do you see uh, that factor playing out? So I think for the small cap space, I think the regulator was and is in a tough bind. You've had, if you look at 2008, small cap funds were 2% of total equity AUM, 2008 when Lehman went bust. And in the year 2008, small cap funds, international and domestic, the few that were there, declined by 60 to 80% from January 1, 2008 till December 31st, 2008. Fast forward to this to this era that we are in, small cap and uh, small cap funds are roughly eight percent of total AUM in equity. So you've gone from two percent to eight percent of a larger share of equity. On top of that, and I don't have data on this, but I know the regulator definitely will have data on this. The people who've entered the market post COVID, from 2020 onwards, trading on their you know sort of on their apps and on their and on their laptops from home. My gut and my guess is that they are a younger generation by age and also taking more risks because they are mostly novice to the world of investing. So my gut is that their allocation to small cap funds is not 8% as is for the universe of all investors of total equity AUM. It's probably more likely 40, 50, 60%. And God forbid, if there were incidents internationally or locally, which cause a 2008 kind of return, rate of return, i.e. a 60%, 80% fall in small cap prices, what could happen is you'll have a lot of discontent. So in 2008, there may have been 1 million people owning small cap funds. Today, that number is probably 10 million. So you'll have a lot of 10 million people who are angry with SEBI. And it's not the fault of, it's not the fault of SEBI. Like SEBI correctly said, the job of the regulator is to frame the market, not to tell you whether shares are expensive or not. So SEBI has done the smartest thing possible. They have sent a torpedo, not towards the ship, but across the bow of the ship. And they've sent a warning for those who care to listen and for those who wish to listen. That listen, be careful. Valuations are a little stretched and illiquidity is a massive concern in small cap funds. We had done our own analysis. Actually, Personal FN had done it and we've looked at the data when Personal FN did this analysis on small cap funds, they found, and I'll give a name here, Nippon, one of the top five, we did of all the top five funds. Nippon is the largest small cap fund. They manage roughly 45,000 crores. One of their top 10 holdings would take 3,000 days to exit, 3,000 days of trading, which translates to roughly 15 years of trading to exit one stock in their top 10. And if you look at it for all of them, HDFC, Kotak, SBI, uh, uh, Nippon, I forget the fifth one, but you look at all of these five, they all have got a lot of illiquid stocks. What Amphi has done in its wisdom or lack of it is that they have told the fund industry. So SEBI has not set the guidelines to determine what is liquidity or illiquidity. They left it to Amphi. Amphi, of course, is a protector and is an association of manufactured or mutual funds. Quantum AMC is also part of Amphi by law. We have to be, but not in spirit. And when we do our own stress test, we use different criteria. What Amphi has used is take your 20% of the portfolio, which is most illiquid, and don't count that. It, just pretend it doesn't exist. And then tell me what your liquidity is. Now, just think about the sense of this, right? When there's a redemption, therefore, the small cap fund, if, the, if and when there's a redemption, will sell its most liquid shares to those who are leaving. And the people who are staying in the fund, imagine that they'll be holding more and more illiquid shares in the fund. So you're basically building up a time bomb where you're forcing retail investors, those who remain, those who are committed to hold more illiquid shares. That is the uh, illogic uh, sort of calculation that's come out of Amphi. And therefore, there's been that bounce up again in small cap funds, in small cap valuations, in small cap prices, because everyone now says, uh-huh, Amphi has done its 
great calculation and there's calm in the market. Not at all. Small cap funds are a time bomb that's going to blow up. I have no idea what the catalyst is. I have no idea what the time period is, but it's massively dangerous. And for those who remember history, and very, very few do, please look at the small cap fund graphs from January 1, 2008 till December 31st, 2008. And you will realize that we don't, again, don't know the timing and don't know the catalyst. But if things go bad, small cap funds are going to be the worst place to have a big chunk of your allocation. Should you be in small cap funds? Of course. Should you have 40, 50, 60% in your small cap funds? Probably not. Should you have 5, 10% in small cap funds? Probably less. Yes, and you should have, and you should have small cap funds that are declaring liquidity on a proper basis. Not this 20% illiquid stocks are exempt, are exempt. That's a bit crazy in my view. All right. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.